Okay, so Psalm 33 and verse 3. Uh, sing to him a new song, play skillfully with a shout of joy. So an exhortation to all the all those in, involved in the worship, uh, music, ministry to uh, play skillfully, right? So we see um, we see that um, being mentioned there. So no doubt worship is a spiritual act, but the Lord, um, the exhortation from the psalmist is to play skillfully. So the Lord is not against skill or against uh, the utility of our skill uh, in a spiritual uh, service, right? the spiritual act or spiritual service uh, like worship. So the Lord is not uh, against the use of skill. Okay, many times we, we see skill as something of the flesh, right? something that is natural. And uh, we look at, we tend to like put that away. But we see here the exhortation, play skillfully, because it is unto the Lord. Right? So whatever abilities we have. So, so what is the inference here? OK, so you have a skill. Uh, if you're going to play skillfully, you need to work at the skill. Right? You need to be good at it, which means it involves uh, some practice, it involves some time, it involves some investment, and and all that, which 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 goes into um, playing skillfully, right? Doesn't happen overnight. There's a lot of uh, there's a lot of behind the scenes that happens before we can actually play skillfully, right? Just want to point that out that the Lord is not against skill. To play skillfully or to use our skills in a spiritual act is not something that is contrary to skip scripture, right? As long as we are using it um, and as unto the Lord, right? And in a in an act of worship unto the Lord, right? In an act of service unto the Lord, right? Okay, so let's uh, let's pray and then we'll continue. Father, we thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, that you've exhorted us, you invited us to, to use our skills. You've invited us to use everything, Lord, soul and body, God, in order to serve you, in order to, Lord, worship you. Lord, we, we thank you, God, for this exhortation. We thank you that uh, you enable us by your spirit. We thank you that you enable us by your word, quickened word, uh, to get better and to be excellent in what we do. And so, God, we, we commit ourselves, Lord, into your mighty hands today. And, Lord, we also commit this course and uh, this time, Lord, um, that we're going to be spending this semester. Lord, we pray that there will be much change uh, in us, Lord, as you, as you lead us from where we are, Lord, from a place of strength where we are to another level of strength, God, as your word declares, strength to strength and glory to glory. Lord, may we be transformed, may we be changed uh, to be more like you. We thank you, Lord. We give you all the praise and all the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay, so last year, final year, <laughs> and uh, yeah, two more semesters to go. Uh, yeah, glad to see you all making this journey right from first semester till now and uh, right wonderful um okay so uh, i'm sure you have your notes maybe you've downloaded the notes on life skills okay um let me present the notes here just a little bit okay um okay Right. Okay. Is that coming up? Uh, no. Nothing yet. Okay. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Oops. OK. 
Okay, something's uh, <laughs> okay. So, uh, so uh, just by way of introduction about life skills, this course um, is a very practical course, uh, as the name suggests. And um, as far as assessment goes, we will um, have a fifty percent uh, assess fifty percent as one of the quiz and fifty percent. So we'll have two quizzes with fifty percent uh, marks. And we'll add both for the final um, marks, right? Final course marks. So just two quizzes. And this is how it is for the in-person, online, as well as uh, e-learning uh, students, right? OK, so we're going to look at uh, all these topics, um, personal development, personal planning, goal setting, uh, communication skills, managing time, managing money, um, how to manage people, uh, resolution of conflicts, creativity and critical thinking, uh, team decision making, uh, emotional intelligence, cultural intelligence, change, and uh, continuous learning. So it's uh, it's it, it looks a bit like a management uh, course on the face of it. Um, but we will also you know look at some scriptural examples and uh, scriptural basis for uh, doing it the way God intends for us to do, right? Um, so we're going to look at that. OK, so when we look at the term life skills itself, so we see that um, um, these are some skills, abilities. Uh, the word skills just means ability. OK, so all of us, we pick up skills on the way. right? And uh, these skills are useful for our daily living. Now, almost uh, every, um, every environment that you could be in, um, you know, there's always an opportunity to learn a particular skill or increase our ability in a particular area. Okay. And these are very useful for us. And uh, when it comes to this particular course, life skill, why, are, why have we um, in, inculcated this course as part of uh, a Bible college, you know, a Bible theological training? The fact is this, that as we are training ourselves spiritually, you know, these are some practical aspects for us to be exposed to, for us to pick up skills in, which really come uh, uh, and come alongside and really give us a boost in our ministry. Right? Because today's environment and our scenario uh, is ever changing. And uh, when we are skilled in some of these things, it could be people, it could be technology, it could be uh, it could be related to finances, it could be anything, you know, it could be communication. When we um, utilize, pick up these skills, get exposed to these skills, and when we utilize these skills or use these skills, uh, it is to our benefit personally, and it is definitely to the benefit of the ministry. Right? Uh, we're not, again, substituting these skills with or for the work of the Holy Spirit. You know, never. Permanent change, deep change, or any kind of transformation comes from God, comes from the hand of God, comes from the work of the Holy Spirit. So we're not, we're not even suggesting that. Okay, but um, we are looking at skills in the right perspective. Okay, we're looking at these things that really enable us to live life uh, uh, optimally, to use this in our ministry, and to really use it for the benefit of God's kingdom. Okay, so so, um, so I'm sure that all of us could be skilled in various things. You know, our levels of skill could vary. We could be skilled maybe when it comes to people, or we could be low in skill when it comes to you know technology, right? Or we could be high in skill, or vice versa, right? So we're going to look at a few things. Um, and like we said, you know, all these different topics and see how we can, you know, we can use these skills. Okay. And so this is what we call as personal development or, you know, how I as a person uh, develop myself, skill myself, you know, uh, increase in, in the ability myself. There's nothing wrong, right? There's nothing wrong as long as we don't rule out God. Okay. There is a right way to look at it. There's a there's a wrong way to look at it. Um, well, uh, the you know if you look at some of the personal development 
uh, input that we receive uh, or that is available there, it completely rules out God. Okay, it's it's a very narcissistic view in the sense the focus is on I, me, myself. Okay, the focus is on me and how the world revolves around me. Right now, that is a wrong view of personal development. You know how I can be. Uh, how I can reach the potential uh, within me, all that is fine. But then if, if it's going to be replacing God, if it's going to be replacing my dependence on God, and uh, you know, if you look at some of these personal development things, it's, it's, it, it, it points to the fact that, OK, you just need to realize or you know, come to that place of realization that you are in the center of the universe. Right? So that's how personal development you know, is portrayed and personal development is pursued as well, right? But you know, when we when we uh, look at it, we know that that is that is the wrong view. We know that does God want the best for us? Of course. In fact, in Jeremiah twenty nine verse eleven, it says, "The very thoughts that He has for us is to give us a hope and a future." Okay, is to give us hope. It is give us future. The Lord Jesus, John ten ten. The, about the good shepherd, uh, he has come so that we might have life and life in its fullness, right? And when we look at the work of the shepherd, you now typically, scripture talks about the fact that David, shepherd of the people, according to the integrity of his heart and the skillfulness of his hands, okay, the integrity of his heart and the skillfulness of his hands. So when we look at how did David do it. He was dependent on God, right? He received impartation spiritually from God, the, the blueprint for the house of God, he received from God. But he also shepherded the people by the skillfulness of his hands. And where did that skill come from? Again, the source is God himself. So when we look at personal development, we are looking at it that way. You know. I'm developing myself so I can be all that God wants me to be. Okay, um, so I can. When we look at spiritual development, we see that it is it is not a one day thing. It is not even a, you know one season of my life I invest and then you know the development comes to an end. No, it is a lifelong thing. It is a continuous thing. Okay, um, I know some of us might have that. You know that mindset. You know, I spend this time, maybe in school, college, university, whatever, uh, or I do something during that time. That's the time for development. That's the time for training. That's the time for learning. So I I pass that phase, and then you know that's it. I don't want to you know I don't want to go back to books anymore. I don't want to listen to any kind of input. If that's our mindset, you know, we we need to change because that was my mindset as well. You know. I, I said, okay, I'm not. I'm never going back to the books. I'm done. You know, graduation, post graduation, done. I've, I've had enough of exams. I've had enough of books, and that's it. You know, I don't want to get back. Now is the time to relax. Now is the time to chill. Now is the time to, you know, just take it easy. You know, um, you know, all our taking it easy and chilling, personal development has to be there. You know, our life is a life of one of going from strength to strength, going from glory to glory. Okay, never forget that. Okay, and it's an enjoyable thing. It needn't be something that is uh, something that is to be endured. Right? It needn't be. Well, there will be some areas which are not our comfort zones, right? There will be some skills which are which are not our com comfort zones, which don't come naturally to us, which our mind rebels and saying, you know, don't don't get into these areas, <laughs> just forget it. But you know, those are some. You know that's that's when we stretch. That's when we um, we we go beyond our, what we are used to, what is convenient, what is comfortable, and we learn and utilize those skills, right? Okay. So uh, again, why is this important? Um, because you know, let's look at this theory, which Maslow, uh, I think. All psychology students or management students would have studied this, right? Maslow's hierarchy of needs. Okay, so let me just show that um, diagram. Okay, so um, so this is a uh, this is what Maslow talks about. He says 
in people, uh, there are these needs, starting with basic physiological needs, food and uh, you know nutrition and sleep, something that the body needs. And then it goes on to several other uh, needs, you know, uh, uh, higher than that. Once that is satisfied or in uh, or even while that is being satisfied, there is a need for safety. There is a need for uh, security and health and so on, um, money. Uh, and then goes on to love and fellowship and belongingness and, uh, and self-esteem and respect. And then also this desire for knowledge and understanding uh, and you know the desire for beauty and creativity and then goes on to talk about you know reaching that full potential and self actualization you know as he puts it right so maslow's hierarchy of needs okay well um, it's it's a it's good to see this it's good to see that uh, people have needs and it's good to see the uh, category of needs right um, so uh, the fact is that when when we develop ourselves it is in all these areas right when personal development addresses all these areas and therefore we see that um, you know we go from one level to another addressing and coming to a place of um, uh, actually satisfying these needs fulfilling these needs is there anything wrong in fulfilling these needs well the answer is no right is there a right way of fulfilling the needs is there a wrong way of fulfilling the needs yes right so that is the thing you know if my self esteem for example if it is going to come from a place of skill it is going to come from a place of the possessions if it's going to come from a place of knowledge alone then there's something wrong right we know we know that because this can go up and down and along with that our self esteem our self worth will keep fluctuating right but whereas if it's if it's based on the truth of who we are then our self esteem doesn't have to go up and down every time the material things or the temporal things change right every time relationships change or you know there's something uh, challenging in the relation it doesn't our self esteem and self worth doesn't have to go up and down but this whole thing of this category of needs and this listing of needs well every human being has them okay there's something that we need to acknowledge okay um so um what are some practical steps what are some things that we can do to develop ourselves okay um very simple. We're not going into in depth, right? Uh, each of these, but simple ways is are uh, to develop ourselves. So the basic ways to start start actually getting into that area is uh, one is how we need to manage our time. Okay, very important because time is a resource. Time is um, it's a limited resource, right? So uh, when it comes when we're looking at time on Earth, of course. So how do we organize that time? How do we utilize that time? OK, so that's the first thing. Second thing is when it comes to personal development, uh, when it comes to stepping into new opportunities, is to actually put together our resume or uh, CV or curriculum vitae. You know? Just to list down, these are the, <clears throat> especially for new opportunities, right? these are the learnings these are the courses these are my experiences and um, this is my experience with regard to actual work or actual ministry uh, and so on right to actually put that together while we might have it in our minds but to put it in a chron chronological it's a simple thing many of us would have done it uh, maybe there are some of us who maybe not done, you know, putting that together, a CV or a resume. Okay. The third thing uh, is to overcome barriers when it comes to learning a skill. Okay. There are certain barriers, and we look at that. Okay, barriers within, barriers outside. So we need to consider them, be aware of them, and to overcome them. Okay. 
Okay, so let's look at time. Okay, organizing our time. You know, um, so if we are going to make changes in life, if we're going to develop ourselves, we need to recognize that or acknowledge that it's going to take time. Okay, while I might have wonderful plans, or you know, maybe about doing a course, maybe about um, you know, um, maybe about uh, you know, going to a particular place and uh, maybe spending t time there, ministering there, and therefore getting the required experience. And so I might have all these beautiful thoughts and plans. But if I do not organize my time, then uh, it's going to be a problem, because all of us have 24 hours. And in that 24 hours, there are several things competing for each of those hours. Okay, uh, if, if we are students, and if you're just students, only students, even then we have, you know, several activities and several things, several responsibilities competing, pulling, pulling us uh, to spend that 24 hours. Okay, so, so we need to have time, adequate time. We need to invest our time. So as we are investing time in developing ourselves, here are some things. Right, time with God, time with family, um, time for our. You know, if you're a person who's working, or if you're a person who's uh, in ministry, if that's your work that you do, um, th those are some things which are non-negotiables. Right, those are things that we need to do. So, uh, if you're studying, devoting time to education. So, um, so how can I, you know, how can I allocate adequate time? Right. If I'm in a class, if I'm in a, if I'm a student, then yes, you know, I spend three or four hours in class, and then I need to spend maybe the same amount of time, if not more, um, learning or studying um, whatever I time that I put in class. Right. Maybe an equal am amount of time. So, uh, where is that going to time come from? It's going to come from that 24 hours, uh, and uh, unless I plan, unless I organize it. Then it is not going to um, it is not going to help, right? So which means that I need to keep track of time. Okay. Um, sometimes we we say, okay, uh, did Jesus ever do that? Right? Yeah. Well, he he went three days late, um, but still he was on time. <laughs> you know. Uh, well, the thing is that yes, we are trying to be you know growing in our Christ likeness, but Jesus was very aware of the times and seasons. Right. He was very aware of the times and seasons. In fact, he he tells um, Mary at the wedding, "My time has not yet come." Very aware of the father's timing. Very aware of what he needs to do and when. And uh, and even when his brother said, "You know, go show yourself at the feast." You know, why do you hide? You know, he knew uh, about his timing. So he had a sense of internal, you know, sense of internal clock or timing that, according to which, which is the father's time, according to which he conducted his life and ministry. So, yeah, at a very basic practical level, okay, how are we spending our time? You know, we can just put together, you know, list down and say, okay, what is it? Uh, where am I spending my time? You know, so just uh, encouraging us to take some time to write down. When, what time do I start uh, my day? What time do I end my day? What do I do during that time? Very simple task, right? But it can be uh, something that that reveals a lot about us. Okay, so that reveals a lot about how we spend, how we don't spend, or how we waste this wonderful resource called time. Okay, so if we need to spend time effectively, okay. Here are some things. We need to say no to certain things. Okay. Um, if it is work, if you are in a formal job, even ministry, we need to learn to say no to certain things which are not directly, uh, you know, what you're recruited for, or which is not directly your primary area of responsibility, right? Which is drawing you away from the main thing we need to be able to say no 
and we need to be able to say no politely you know because they could these could be requests these could be things um you know there's a difference there's a difference between helping someone there's a difference between uh, doing that but also there's a difference between something that is taking you away from what is required of me right let's say i'm called to be um uh, or called to be a teacher and um, if there are activities in my life or you know there's this draw that is pulled that is taking me away from investing time in preparation or investing time in the actual teaching you know if it's going to draw me away if my classes get can cancelled over and over again due to some other thing you know certain things could be unavoidable but if it's going to result in that that means that i need to evaluate and say hey this is taking me away from the main thing right so i need to say no to this so i need to prioritize okay okay learning to delegate learning to delegate certain things you know what is it that you can actually hand over to others okay maybe you are in a in a place of work maybe in a work place of ministry what is that main thing that you are called to do and what are those things that you can actually um hand over to others when you delegate to others you are actually creating an opportunity for that person to serve for that person to help right for that per person to learn i think of it that way not as something that you offloading you know and and kind of burdening someone with it's it's not necessary you don't have to look at it that way the person gets an opportunity to serve to minister to learn new things and uh, and and so on right okay so do you have a to do list third thing Okay, a to-do list for the day, a to-do list for the week, um, and if so, how do you how do you you know uh, how do you do that? Is it something that you write? Is it something that is on your phone? Is it something you know? So I I put it on my phone, and um, it looks very intimidating at times, and. Um, but yeah i so here's a list of some i don't know if you can see it okay um here's a list of some things i i i think we want to 3 5 10 some 11 tasks that i need to complete uh in addition to spending time here at the bible college so so uh, i just put it there so that it doesn't weigh heavily on my mind I try it you know maybe there's something which is over and over again you know this thought i need to do this i need to do that just put it on paper or put it recorded somewhere you'll realize that that is not bothering you anymore right you've put it you've recorded it now your mind is clearer to concentrate on other things right to think about other things so yeah so having a to do list helps having it on maybe a gadget that you can refer to uh, time and time again or on a notebook um it's Uh, is very very important okay uh, give up things that you don't want to do okay um when are you the f when are you most fresh most alert okay is it post lunch or is it early in the morning or is it late night right uh, late in the evening when whenever you your the time for work is now let's say you have 8 hours for which to do these tasks daily during these 8 hours when is it that you find yourself dragging when you find yourself you know there's a lot of things required um you need to really stir yourself up or when is it that you are the most alert and most fresh you know try and do the most demanding tasks then right okay so here are some things uh, about our time uh putting together a personal a cv or a resume okay we won't go into too much of details of it but uh, best thing is to do it in a chronological manner i'll also put to, put a post a couple of samples that you can look at and consider you know consider tweaking fine tuning your resume um, or uh, also you know if you've not started on it you can actually do that right so we we'll, a resume typically has your list of learnings formal informal so formal education would be school college the courses that you enrolled in to do uh, informal would be something that you picked up maybe some workshop that you attended um uh, maybe some online thing that you did 
on your own time, right? So it could be a, something informal. Uh, it could also list down some skills. It could also list down some experiences that you had, and uh, and also formal work experience or ministry related experience. You know, it's good to put that in a way that is um, that communicates it effectively. So within a short time, people are able to get. Right. If it's in reverse chronicle, chronological order, that would be best, starting with what you're doing at present to what you did or how you started off five years before or 10 years before. Right? OK. So when it comes to learning a new skill, you know, we are, we're talking about personal development. When it comes to learning a new skill, OK, what are some barriers? What are things that really help us or, I'm sorry, uh, what, hinder us from learning these things? OK, some things are internal for example lack of confidence or self esteem okay, if you look at a task you look at the skill level what or what is required of us to learn that skill maybe it's a language skill okay uh, and it, it looks very daunting and you feel that you don't have the confidence to to go through it confidence so we don't even start right so we don't even start that so once we make that attempt and cross that hurdle then as we as we try it out and we realize that hey i can actually do that okay so it could be internal secondly it could be an economic situation which is more of an external thing you know we we know that things come uh, at a cost if if there's a course that we need to enroll in uh, maybe there's a cost to it monetary right uh, and so maybe we need to um, we need to kind of research and find out, you know, what is it that I can do at something that I can afford now? And and nowadays, there are a lot of things that we can do for free where it doesn't involve um, any expense from our side, right? Of course, it involves some kind of maybe digital um, investment in the sense maybe you have a laptop or a, uh, something or a, or a phone, smartphone, et cetera. But uh, we can actually research and find out, right? Um, third thing could be also a family commitment. Um, we know that, like we said, all these activities, you know, when it comes to, uh, you know, spending of our time, uh, there are some commitments, there are some um, which really restricts our time, you know, because these is, these are important things. So that could also be a or a barrier or something as a constraint, right? So we need to work around these things. So we can't fully neglect it. We need to work around it. We need to see how best can I do it. Okay. And uh, it's really the life of some of these people that we have studied, very inspirational, especially you know, if you look at William Carey. William Carey actually um, William Carey came to India as a missionary. He, he did the work of translation. But if you, if you actually study, he works, worked as an apprentice for a cobbler, um, you know. And it was during his free time that he studied the scripture. It was during his free time that he learned the Greek. Uh, of course, he had a flair for languages, but it was during his uh, free time as he worked in, as an app apprentice uh, for the cobbler, you know, make, putting together these shoes and all that. So, um, so can it be done? Yes. But will it require something out of us? Yes. Right? OK. So any. Um, any questions or anything that you may want to add here? OK, so feel free to do that, right? Um, OK, is there somebody putting on a hand? OK, fine. Right. OK, let's look at. Um, Okay, this is something that we looked at, right? Um, so have a personal development plan. So I just want to ask us, you know, do you have uh, an idea, or maybe this year, you know, I want to grow in these skills. Okay, um, maybe there is a thought, you know, I want to enroll somewhere, I want to study, and I want to do these things, and maybe there's no uh, time frame to it. Right? It's a desire. It's a wish. Uh, it's a thought, but unless it uh, be, it is um, developed into a plan, 
then we will not actually execute it right so it could be a, it could be a desire i wish i could do that i wish i could play that instrument i wish i could learn that language um i wish i you know i whatever you know i i learned that skill uh, i learned to play that instrument whatever right so it it is it is in the it is in the wish level right it is at the desire level which is good this is important but it needs to come to the level of a personal plan okay so that is what we are going to look at okay? when it involves a personal plan then uh, there are certain there's a certain factors we, which go into it okay one is clarity okay? clarity of what i want to do or where i want to be why is it that i want to do that okay because this will actually enable us fuel us to pursue it okay? a clear vision and it is uh, of course important to add a time frame to it okay so let's say in the next 6 months or in the next few weeks right put a time frame to it and um, if it's a course that you want to do you know when do you want to do it right so unless we do that it doesn't we will not actually pursue it because it's still there when do you want to do it i don't know sometime in future right you, you i'm sure you've had that experience of you know um hey we need to meet you tell your friend hey we need to meet sometime or you tell your relative we need to meet sometime and then that person also says yeah yeah we need to meet sometime but unless you say put the put the date down and say you know let's meet next tuesday uh, 8 am let's meet for breakfast it never happens right and uh, same thing you know i've i've experienced you know i've just said hey we need to we need to get together we need to meet but unless uh, and that always remains you know there are some there are some people to whom i have said we need to meet we need to meet <laughs> and then it's gone you know 2021 went 20 to 22 went and then we're still talking about hey we need to meet sometime right but to those people where you said hey let's meet next week and let's meet at this time the likelihood of that happening even if there is a change um in you know that particular thing hey, some, maybe you were busy or something didn't didn't work out and you kind of had to change that date the likelihood of that happening is far far higher right so that is why you know whenever we have these things okay i i want to develop myself in this area i want to learn this i want to do this put a date and time put a time frame okay in the next one month i want to do it how do i how do we do it or oh, i want to enroll here okay have i done it already no well the month is you know we already you know into two weeks of the month so we better do it fast we better do it soon right so a clear vision plus putting time frames okay okay then a uh, second one is a clear understanding of the skills we need in order to develop that vision or achieve that vision right um maybe we want to get into this job maybe we want to get into this we want to live in a certain place we want to do this particular course in this university etc um you know what does it involve what does it take right does it involve a certain skill does it involve a certain resource right so we need to have a good understanding of that which means when we have an understanding of it when we perceive it then uh, we when we utilize those skills then we will be actually doing it right okay a clear idea of the standard right so which means that um, okay i'm work, working at this level right now but in order to get a different output i need to up my standard right uh, i'm getting this done with the current level of work current level of output now i cannot do the same thing and expect a much higher level a much excellent output right it's going to change the way i i need to change the way i work right if i want to do 10 things or if i want to do 20 things and right now i'm only doing five things with the current skill level and current uh, 
you know, at the, the present way in which I work, right? I cannot expect to be to have completed 20 things uh, but I, by the end of next month, right? Because if my input, if my effort, uh, and if the nature of input is going to be the same, right? Very simple. I need to change. There has to be some change. So I need to have an idea of what I need to change and how I need to do it. Right. So this is the level of input. I get a certain output. Do I need to change it? Do I need to, you know, what is the output? involved right do i need to change it do i need to up my game do i need to increase it i need to do that it, it need not be just you know it may not be just the effort it could be something else also you know uh, it could be a different area of learning uh, a different skill for example if my standard requires that then uh, if my current standard, I have this, but if my output requires that, I need to um, learn that as well. Okay. Okay. Um, prioritizing. Okay, we looked at that. You know, um, what are some things that I need to prioritize? You know, simple things like to-do lists. I might have twenty things, but in that, what is what is it that you know we're going to learn some more? on that when we look at time management um the management of um, you know you already know you know what is urgent what is important and um, what are some things that i need to uh, you know address first so that that's how i arrive at a priority right uh, that's how i prioritize urgent important and uh, and then we come at uh, arrive at something so we, we can say okay this is important and it is urgent also so let me let that be the first task that I start off. And the other things can be much later. So when we are thinking in terms of time frame like years, we could say, OK, this not right now. Okay, Not right now. This is not important right now. Maybe I could defer it to a later month or a later year also. Right? OK. Uh, several things listed here. Um, but I just want to, you know, just make mention of this fact that, you know, take it one step at a time. Okay. Uh, take it one step at a time. Yes, it can be, it can seem very daunting. It can seem very overwhelming when you look at things. Okay. How do I reach that place? Okay. How do I reach that destination? The way seems so long. It seems so complex. How do I reach that? Right. We take it one step at a time. Everything that seems very, very complex, complicated, and so intertwined, it starts with the first step. Right? The more complex the thing is, you need to understand that it, it looks complex because we have not really broken that down to a series of small steps. Okay, So um, don't worry about it. Take it one step at a time time okay whatever is complex um, in in terms of learning you know it seems complex take it one step at a time okay um, okay so we'll stop here uh, for today and uh, anything that you might want to add or uh, maybe you know there is some skill that you're looking to develop something that uh, that that is on your radar you know saying oh, this is something which is of priority um maybe you can share that you know what is it that um that you're looking at is there anything that you're saying okay i want to learn this skill maybe even talking about it will help you to get started right like for example you know i i, I came across um, a course uh on udemy uh, a good good course was spoken kannada Right here in Karnataka, we speak the language. Uh, most people speak Kannada. I don't know Kannada. I come from another state, so I don't know Kannada. So I just felt that hey, I need to know in order to engage, in order to interact at a better level with people. So, so I found this free course on Udemy. So I'm just telling you guys right now. So you can actually ask me. You know, 
did you enroll for the course? Did you start? Right. So I can hold myself ac uh, accountable and, and really start and finish that off. It's not a long course. It, it's a few hours only. But you know, I can start it. So OK. Is there anything that you feel is stirring? I need to you know, start something. I need to learn this. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. Hmm. So planning of finances. Okay. Yeah. Right. Right. Okay. Mm. Okay. Right, right. Right, right. So Jeffin is uh, talking about how getting organized with uh, generally about her things, her personal uh, you know, belongings, etc., and also finances. Right? Uh, learning, um, maybe saving, investing, uh, and also tracking, right? That's that would uh, tracking is a first step, and then we can you know you can move into how to save, and then once you're saying okay this is the this is the amount that I have, then you can go into investing and so on, right? So okay, so we'll stop here, and uh, we'll meet uh, next class where we develop things further, right? Okay, thank you so much. God bless you. Bye bye. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you, Pastor.